Okay, so here's our agenda. We're going to wire up the ESP uh, onto a breadboard. We're going to install a different firmware called Node MC on the ESPs. And then we're going to install Node.js on the Raspberry Pi. And then we're going to start coding and have fun. So let's get started. Um, I don't know if um, this is an unusual thing or a common thing, but when I purchased my ESP8266, it did not come with headers. So while some people may think that's a negative, I actually saw it as a positive because I was able to make it more breadboard friendly. Because normally it comes with uh, very, very close headers. I mean, if these are headers pointing down, it will look like this. This is actually not an ESP8266, but it has a similar pinouts. But um, on mine, what I did is I just solder my own angle header. So this one goes to the front and angle that way. And the one on the back is the opposite way. It angles towards the back and then down. And that extra distance caused by the angle allowed these two pins here to be further apart. And I was able to plug it in on a breadboard. But if yours didn't, uh, yours already come with the uh, headers and very close like this and you can't plug it in and you don't want to use um, female to female headers because it'll just be messy or you don't want to unsolder them. Here's a, t a trick I came up with that uh, basically uh, it you only need a, a long, extra long header like one of these guys over here. And then uh, you just need to bend one, one, one set of pins and then uh, you uh, use the long-legged header and bend the legs of the long-legged header and then you can use it uh, without actually having to desolder anything. So uh, I'll put a link to this video so you guys can watch it uh, more in more detail. Okay, let's talk some wiring. Let's start with power. Ground is on the top left here. The black wire goes to ground. The positive is 3.3 volt. As you know, ESP8266 is a 3.3 volt device. So that's this wire right here. And in this diagram, I display a uh, voltage regulator, but I've also connected it to just a 3.3 LiPo battery. It works great. And it goes as high as four volts and it seems to be okay, but I wouldn't put five volts here. So make sure that you only put 3.3 .3 to four volts here. And then let's go to the left here. So these two pins are reset and chip enable. And both of them will do something else like this will disable the module. We don't want that. So make sure that's high. And this, if you bring this to low, it will reset the module. We also don't want that. So bring them both to high. So that's down here. And then these two are kind of confusing <laughs> because they're like backward depending on which uh, point of view you're taking. From the point of view of the ESP module, this is a receive pin, RX, a receive pin. But from the point of view of the other side, uh, let's say you connect this to an Arduino. From the Arduino's point of view, this is a transmit pin. So just keep that in mind that basically it, the, the meaning of the RXTX depending on which side you're looking at uh, from. So this one is the receiving side of the ESP going to the transmitting side of the Arduino or in my case uh, an FTDI that translates basically the USB here from the PC where we would actually send a program to program this later and so it goes in here uh, from the TX so he transmits here and then it doesn't go directly to that pin as you notice that's because this is a 5 volt FTDI or an Arduino that's a 5 volt device you can't connect this directly. It would get confused because the signal is 0 and 5 is uh, high and low. But as far as his is concerned, it's 0 and 3.3 .3 is high and low. So to adjust for that, I put these two things here called the resistor ladder. So when this is 5 volts, it splits the, the, the 5 volts into two pieces. This bottom piece here is about 3.3 .3 volts and that one is uh, whatever is the remaining. Okay, so basically when it's 5 volts high here, this will stay at 3.3 which is the high as far as the ESP is concerned. On the other side, when he needs to transmit something back, you know, like coming from the Wi-Fi to the PC or the Arduino, then it will send it through this one right here. So that's the TX as far as the ESP is concerned, and it is the RX as far as the Arduino or the PC is concerned. And notice I don't have any resistor ladder on this one because the FTDI is tolerant enough to uh, take the 3 volt as high and 0 as low. So he works fine without the level conversion. 
You can also buy chips and stuff to do this, but I have not found it to be necessary. So that leaves the last two, which is the most important, which is our GPIO pins. We have two only two GPIO pins to play with, with the ESP1. Some other ESP will have more pins for I/O. You know, unlike the Arduino that has I don't know, 15 or so I/O pins. We only have two here. You can connect a switch to one, an LED on the other, which is what I do here. So the most important thing uh, to learn uh, that I did not learn right away is that this pin here is special. It not only is it an I/O pin to receive and transmit, it is also a mode pin to tell the ESP whether you are trying to put in new firmware or not. So make sure that when you turn on the ESP on, this pin is pulled high. Because if it is currently low when you turn this on, it will go into a mode where it's waiting for you to put in new firmware in here. And of course your program won't run and nothing works. So be aware of that. So that's why I wired both of these such that they are normally high. Okay, let's go from the red here. So this is plus, goes to a pull-up resistor, goes through there, goes through there. So normally that's high unless I press this button and that will bring this pin to ground and then this will be low and then that's what we will do when we are programming this but normally it'll be high similarly <laughs> when you're wiring up an LED it is kind of backward here notice that it goes from here through the current limiting resistor for the LED it goes to the anode the positive side of the LED goes down here to the cathode the negative side of the LED and goes down here and as as long as this is not a low then this LED will not lit up so when this is low then the circuit becomes complete and the LED would light up. But the reason I wire it kind of backward like this instead of making this to be the high turning that on, because if you do if you do the opposite way, then this end will have to go to ground, and then that ends up um, making this pin normally grounded if this is an input set up as an input pin rather than an as, as an output pin. So that's why that's backward. Yep, I think we're done with the wiring. And you, you can wire both of these the same on your both FTDI. Let's go look at the next step. Mm -hmm.